Okay, I want to show you, I made a couple more modifications. Nothing major. I mean, it's major, but it's nothing different too much. I got rid of the gas pedal tensioner for the belt. And so now the belt and the motor are direct drive, you know, constant, constantly engaged. But I changed the motor. <laughs> now I have a one horse Dayton and it's a two phase or single phase motor. You can wire it either way. And I've got it wired to be a single phase, but it's a one horse and it doesn't turn any faster. It's got the same RPM, 1725 as the other other motor did, but this one's just got the lugging power. It'll pull you up the hills in fifth gear now. And it sets a lot lower, I'll show you that in a minute, to the ground than the other one did, but uh, the other motor just started getting weak on me. Uh, the pulley didn't work on it as well, so I got a different pulley on this one. I'd like to put a smaller pulley back there but with the kids driving it, they probably won't be able to go over, you know, first, second, maybe third gear with the small pulley. That was like an eight or nine inch. And I'm thinking about putting a five inch on there, six or five. I've got a six inch here and a five inch there. Or I was thinking about this is a six and changing that eight or nine into a five. But I can't get that pulley off there. I've tried to heat it up with a torch and, and using wax like the guy on the Internet shows. I can't get it to budge. I'm afraid I'm gonna tear up the transaxle trying to get it off. So I just, as I put it back together, I just went with this setup. Everything's the same. It's just direct drive now. There's no clutch. Uh, I put a little spring here so they can play with the gas pedal, you know, push it and it comes back. But anyway, that's the upgrade I made. One horse, uh, it's, a, it's a dual phase motor. One, 230 or 120, I forget what it says. It's an old motor, uh, you know, 115 or 230 is what it says. So it's like a 120, 240. Cause this, the motors I have were made back before the voltage went up. <laughs> it used to be 115, 230 back in the day. Now the voltages are 120, 240. But anyway, bigger one horse motor, direct drive, and I'll show you how low it sits here in just a second. Okay, now you can see with this bigger motor, not a lot of clearance underneath, <laughs> three or four inches maybe. So that's a drag. You can't go over any, you know, really hilly, bumpy areas, but everything they drive on is pretty flat anyway. And uh, the only way to raise that is to raise the transaxle or put the motor, flip it upside down, you know, pointing downward, but I didn't want it up where they can get near the wiring or the heat from it, because it does get warm, especially this one, running at half voltage is meant for, it runs good, but it get, runs hotter. But anyway, it sits real low, so I want you to see that. But it's got the power. I mean, it doesn't drive any faster. It's got the same speed the cart does, but the cart has the power now to keep going, you know, on hills and such. Anyway, that's the upgrade so far. My other option is, which I thought of, which a lot of you probably did, to get more ground clearance on the motor, to keep the motor underneath, is to go with bigger rims and tires and keep my, you know, uh, perspective or percentage of size of back with the size of the front the same. You know, smaller ones in the front, bigger ones in the back, but yet, make them both bigger which would raise me up so my motor would have more clearance that way i don't have to flip the motor upside down or point it the other way to get it away from the ground anyway i'm sure some of you thought of this but it's going to be hard to find bigger rims or bigger tires to fit these rims to give me more lift because so i've only got about three inches of clearance <laughs> right now with the motor pointing down so anyway, that's something else. Put different uh, tires or tires and rims on it, lift it up higher so I can have clearance. Anyway, I'm sure some of you thought of that, but it just dawned on me. But I don't think these axles are going to accept rims that are much bigger. Laters. 
Okay, here it is in neutral. Just let you hear how it sounds with the new one horse, you know, 120, 240 volt motor wired up single phase for 110 or 120. And I just let it run in neutral so you can hear how loud it is when it's running. Loud. I'm controlling it with the switch over here. It's pretty loud, but it kicks ass, and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, here it is with the new motor, the one horse, uh, 230 or 120, 240 volt motor, wired up for a single phase, 120. Here it is in fifth gear with nobody riding it. It just takes off and goes. Okay, what I wanted to show you here was I've cut my pole off, made it a lot shorter, and I'll show you why. I put in an electrical swivel on the top of it. But I wanted to show you this so you can see how long it is now. It's not very long. Maybe five feet of pole. I've cut the tip off and revamped it. But I wanted to show you that first to show you how... I've adjusted the uh, swivel point to work with a, a swivel instead of twisting the cord up. So I'll move on to showing you how I did it and what I did it with. Just let you get a look at it. It not look like my phone's really focusing, but I'll show you it in a different angle. I just wanted to see it on the ground. It's not very big, five foot. We'll move on. Okay, here's the polling device. You can see it's not that tall, about five foot. Not really that tall. And I'm gonna put this camera in a stationary position and show you everything else, but I wanna show you this while I can move the camera. The cord still goes in the bottom. I don't need to tie it off. And there's my 20 inches that goes in the ground. The vise here is at the ground level. So the rest of the pole would be sticking in the ground. Like I showed you in the last video, and this part of the pole will be sticking out of the ground. There's my swivel. And up here is my electrical swivel. So this is the tensioner swivel, the, the tether swivel. And up here is the electrical swivel. And I'll show you how that's made and how I made it with this in just a moment. But I wanted you to see it's not very tall at all. See my hand there, down to my elbow is just the length of the pipe from the tether swivel up to the electrical swivel. It's not very long. And then from there down to the bottom, just, you know, 30 inches or so from, from here. Like I said, it's in the vise at the ground level. You can see where the ground level is with that discoloration on the pipe. Anyway, I shortened it up and put a swivel. And that swivel just cost me 25 bucks for the electrical part and the bearing. And I'll show you how that works here in just a moment. And well, before I do that, just remember, this is all the same. Everything is basically the same, except instead of the wire twisting up inside the pipe, it now, the wire swivels up here. I've got electrical swivel. I found for 15 bucks on Amazon. And I'll show you that. Here next, I'll show you the, the the bearing I bought and used, and I'll show you a link to the electrical swivel I put on the bearing, and I'll show you how I put it together here in just a moment. Okay, what I'm going to show you here is the swivel 
is just a bigger piece of this same bigger pipe. And what I did, I made that extension cord short. It goes from the bottom in the pipe, the bottom up to here. And there's a bolt through here to keep this from dropping down so I don't ever lose it. Uh, my connections here where I cut the cord and put my wire nuts and electrical tape stop this from dropping. On this end, I have another cord. It's male that goes into that one. And it just goes up inside here to a bearing. And inside the bearing is the uh, piece you saw at Amazon that you buy, the swivel itself. It's electrical. But the bearing gives it some strength. And the electrical part, the wires from the electrical, the bottom part of the electrical swivel hooked to this plug the top part hooks to this plug. And I just drilled a hole in the side of this and ran my wires from the top side, top side of the plug around. And I put a little clamp on here to hold this where I want it on the swivel part. As you see, it swivels. So my electrical connection stays connected as this swivels. The bearing's just there to give it strength when I snap my uh, tethering part for the electrical cord here, let the cord itself bag around, and I'll show you that later. That's just how I made the swivel, so I could shorten the pipe, and not have to worry about turning them around going different directions. I welded, drilled a hole in this pipe, welded a nut on here, and took a bolt and just welded a T on the top of it, so that when I put it together, which I'll do in a minute, uh, I'm not going to plug it now so I can show you this. I slide this down on the pipe and I tighten this bolt and it secures my bottom part of my swivel to the pipe which lets the top part swivel as the car goes around. But that's how and why I did that and I'll show you the parts. This bearing, the uh, inside piece and I just had a metal plate here. I drilled a hole in it just big enough for the the electrical part to go through and I connected it to it. Uh, the, the bearing, actually the electrical part has holes in it. So you can bolt the electrical swivel to this metal plate and then have a hole in this plate to let the electrical swivel go through, bolt it to it. And then I tack welded, if you can see, I tack welded my bottom part of my bearing to the plate which keeps it sturdy with the bottom part of the swivel so this doesn't turn. And then when the swivel turns up above that, the other part of the electrical swivel swivels with the bearing. So that's how I made that happen. So next, and if you have any questions on that, just say so on the website or email me or whatever on how I made this work together. If you once you get the parts and you understand the parts themselves, I'll show you how I made them work. But all I did was make it to where I can plug this in here and just take it apart in case it gets left out in the rain. So I'm gonna leave this out in the water, in the rain or what have you. I can put a cap on this, leave the other electrical part, the female part, down inside here and put another cover like this with a cap welded on it, put it over it, it won't get wet, the, this part of the electrical. But I can plug these together when I'm ready to use it, push this down in, and the bolt here through it keeps this other cord from dropping all the way down. And I just push these up into each other, slide that down to where it's pretty straight, tighten that up. Now this is stuck solid with the pipe in the ground, but yet the electrical will swivel. Okay, you've seen the picture of the bearing and the picture of the swivel itself. I didn't film it as I made it because I was trying to experiment and see. So the, the swivel is inside here, the bearing's on top, but on the bottom of the bearing, I took a piece of that bigger pipe like it's in the ground I cut it in half. I had one about three inches long and one about two inches long. So, you know, cutting this piece of pipe in half that goes over my other pipe that's my main pipe works. Uh, 
besides showing you how the, the tension tight, tightening device works, it's just a, a hole drilled in this with a nut welded to it and a bolt threaded through it with a T-handle on it. So when you screw that down, the bolt comes on the inside and tightens up to your pipe coming out of the ground. But the point on it was, this plate here is just like a eighth inch thick piece of plate. I had steel plate. And this is one I used for something else, but I drilled a hole in it, 22 millimeter, a little bit bigger, so that the swivel would fit down through there. And the swivel has those three holes on a plate on it to hold your bottom uh, part of the swivel secure. And I drilled hold three holes in this, lined up with the three holes in the swivel to bolt it to this plate. Then I tack welded the plate to my bottom pipe with the securing bolt on it. That's that plate there. It's welded to this. It's tack welded to the uh, bottom part of the outer tubing that screws down and tightens up to your, your main shaft. Then, as the bearing goes up through the, the uh, or the swivel bearing goes up through the physical bearing, I let the top of it stick through and the bottom of it was secured to this plate so i just tack welded this other bearing the bottom part of this bearing plate one half of it to the plate so that holds the bottom half of the bearing to my metal plate that i secured to my uh, bottom piece of bigger pipe so the bearing is solid to this, and this is solid to that. So then my electrical connection, the swivel, sticks up through there. And what I did was as that connection stuck up through there, I took another piece of this, another piece of this pipe that was cut to this length, about two or three inches, and slipped it in the center of my bearing and just tack welded it to the top side of the bearing where it would just swivel. It moves with the top side that moves. The bottom side is welded to the plate, which is welded to, to the tubing, which is screwed down to your main uh, pipe coming out of the ground. Then after I did that, I hooked my electrical connections up. I hooked the male plug to the bottom side of the wires going into the swivel, and I made, uh, electrically connected a female plug going to the top side of the electrical connections of the swivel. Like I said, I drilled a hole in the side of this top swiveling piece and just tacked it to the side with a clamp here so it moves around, but it doesn't drag down and rub on these corners of this bottom plate. It stays up here and shoots that out to the side far enough to where it doesn't, you know, rub or make, uh, my core doesn't make connection with my stable piece down here, the stationary side. Then I took a little piece of quarter inch steel welded it across the top of my swiveling uh, pipe and then put a piece of, I just took a, a piece of chain, cut it in half, a good sized chain, cut a link in half and then I just tack welded it there in this, this U shape, like a horseshoe, half a horseshoe or whatever you want to call it. That's where I snap my electrical cord on with its tether so they can bag down and plug in here. So that's how that was made. And you saw the picture of the electrical swivel and the bearing, and that's how I made it. Like I said, I drilled the hole in my plate, mounted my swivel through the hole with the three holes that come with the swivel, mounted it to the plate, tack welded it to this piece. And so then once the, the swivel sticking up through, you put the bearing over and you tack weld the bearing to the plate on the bottom side, the bottom half of your your bearing gives you some strength on your swivel. Then the top side is all welded on the top side of the plate of your bearing swivel. So they move independently. That's how that was made. And up here, like I said, is just your tether. That's to hold the weight of the cord going around so that you don't pull on the plug. If you tighten the plug down and you don't have something up here welded to this plate, it's gonna mess up your swivel. Your electrical swivel will not hold that tension of dragging the cord around. 
So you have to have something stable up here welded to the top of the bearing for the weight of the cord, but the plug, you know, is just kind of laying there. So I guess if you know, you've got this far, you understand that. So that's how that was made to slip over the top of the pipe and do the swivel for the electric go-kart for a circular thing like a carnival ride or what have you. And you know, you could uh, leave it where you don't have to go in circles, but you have to make sure you don't wrap your, your bagging cord around your pipe going in the ground if, you've got, if you come close to it. But this is for the tethered one. It's more like a carnival ride for young kids. That way you don't have to worry about turning the, the car around to untwist the cord. It's just whatever direction you want to go, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. And I'll show you right, show you them riding it here shortly. So that's how I actually made that. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, here it is with the, the new bigger motor on it, which everything else is the same except what I showed you. It's on the tether. There's my power cord going from the swivel over to the car and then the other cord that comes from my plug-in out here to the pipe and i brought my switch out here so i can turn it on and off out here to show you kids ain't out here right now so there's the swivel there's the tether swivel so you see it's not very tall it's just a little over between my knee and my hip so it's not very tall at all out of the ground not even three foot maybe three foot so i'll turn it on let you see it in action from here there goes the car and let's see the swivel the cord just drags behind and the swivel just goes around right along with the tether Feeding power cord to the cart just drags behind. Like I said, there's a snap here to keep the tension off the plug. The tension is always on the uh, snap to the top of the swivel where the bearing is. Anyway, that's it in action here at the post. Now, I'll give you an idea of the height of it by backing up. Anyway, the pipe's shorter, got a swivel. It can go around the same direction indefinitely, you know, as long as everything's working. So that's it in action. Uh, I'm not even gonna film them on it. You already seen that, you know what it does. Uh, no, no faster speed or anything with the bigger motor. It's just got more power to pull them up this little grade here or that way, whichever direction it's going. That's the only difference the motor really did. As you can see, it's not a whole lot of ground clearance, but that's what it is. Leaders. Well, here comes the dog running across, staying ahead of the rope. Come on, get out of the way. Come on, come on. Don't get run over, dog. That's it with an electrical swivel. Laters. Here's one of them riding it. Solo ride by Lily Bean. So it does work even with the weight of the children.
But like I said, that motor pulls them a lot quicker. A lot, well, not quicker, but better up the hills. So there it is. There you go. There's Bubby. Riding the car. Yep. Vroom, vroom. Why? Because he's way over there. He's not in my phone. He's driving around. Here he comes. Here he comes. Now you have Bobby! Bobby! Woo! Okay. <laughs>